Who doesn't love beautiful containers full of gorgeous color, whether it's foliage and blooms or a combination of them? But sometimes it can be a little daunting when you think about all of those choices out there. Now, when I start thinking about a container and the color combination, it's really about the color and the style. And I also think about exactly where I see it. And in this case, I want to do something spectacular for my front porch. And so that's why I chose this purple, the chartreuse, and this white to go along with these funky sort of orangey peach colored chairs I have on the front porch. I think the combination is going to be dynamite. Now you've all heard me talk about the shape and form of plants. And it's important, I think. So in this case, for something that's going to be really dramatic, um, as a, what I call a thriller, I'm gonna use this Color Blaze Lime Time Coleus. Now I wanna go back just a moment because this situation, the environment this container will be in is going to be really hot, the western end of a porch. So these plants, I've seen them grow in full hot sun and I know that they will perform in a container. So there's no risk there in what I've chosen. Now I'm gonna use three of these in the middle because I want a really bold, like I said, explosion. I want it to look like dynamite. And then what I'm gonna do is take this Euphorbia, uh, which is Diamond Delight, and I want those to sort of grow around the base of these uh, coleus. I'm just gonna take a few of these and they're gonna go around the side. And the reason I'm using a little bit of white is that on the trim of the house, there is white, and I wanna echo something from the architecture of the home. So, um, Probably do about three of those on each side. Yeah, like that. And then, so this is gonna be kind of a filler. If, if you've grown this plant before, you know it makes a beautiful mound. And, and even though these flowers look so delicate, they're not. They can take the screaming hot heat. It's a euphorbia, so it's, it's tropical in nature. So it's got heat loving genes in it. So, all right, now, the last thing I want to add is this Super Tunia. I just love this one. This one's called Bordeaux. And um, what I love about it is the, is the purple veining. Just, just look at that bloom. It's just exquisite. You get a range of purple, that deep, almost black purple in the center. The veins carry that color through. And then as you move from the center out to the edge of the flower, you can see it becomes a really beautiful sort of lavender shade. So here, I've got them all nested in this container, and now it's just a matter of planting them and watering them in. As you can see, coming up with winning combinations and creating beautiful containers is as simple as one, two, three, done. So get out there, apply your own personal style, and get creative. Let's get ready for spring. You don't want to miss my tips on tulips up next. When it comes to the spring season, there's one flower that you just can't resist. It's such a simple and classic beauty that can really put on a show. In my garden, I plant tulips in lots of different places, including containers, which can be a real statement if you plant them just the right way. To get started, just fill your container with a fast draining potting soil. Just any good blend will work. And you want to fill it up to about six inches within the rim of the container. To make a big statement of color, you're gonna to need to pack them in. Like I say, shoulder to shoulder. In just one 17 inch container, I'll pack as many as 50 bulbs. 
Now once you get those bulbs in place, it's just a matter of covering them with about five inches of potting soil, leaving about a one inch gap between the top of the soil and the rim of the container for watering purposes. Now remember, if you want tulips in your garden in the spring, you have to plant them in the fall. And before you know it, they're gonna come up and bloom and you're gonna have a gorgeous display. Walk this way, using containers to accent pathways. When we return, don't go away. I don't know about you, but when spring rolls in, I'm so excited. I can hardly wait. And the great harbinger of spring, in my opinion, is the daffodil. Just look at these, aren't they gorgeous? This is a variety called Jetfire. Now, what I like about daffodils is they're so versatile. They're perennial, meaning they're gonna come back year after year. They're deer resistant, that's right, deer won't eat them. And they're so easy to grow. Whether you're growing a big field of them, a few in the flower bed, or even in containers, daffodils will always perform. Now, these little jet fires, as you can see, are illuminating this pathway in the garden. I love to accent pathways and entrances with containers with brightly colored flowers. And the daffodil this time of year, when it's still cold at night, is the perfect candidate. Now, after these little guys bloom, I won't cut the foliage back. In fact, I'll take them out of the containers and plant them out in flower beds and they'll come back for years to come. I bet you've got one of these around the house, a laundry basket. But do you have one that's showing a little wear and maybe time for replacement? If so, why not take the old one and apply our do-it-yourself project where you can transform one of these into a beautiful indoor planter.
Coming up next, I'll show you how to plant small bulbs to make a big impact right after the break. I don't know about you, but when spring rolls around, I can't wait to see spring bulbs. Just look at these gorgeous hyacinths. I love to use them around the house in many ways and in lots of different types of containers. And what a fragrance on these hyacinths. They're wonderful to have around. But let me show you a smaller version of the hyacinth, one that I think has equal charm. Let me introduce you to the grape hyacinth, or muscari. Now, they're not as bold and big, they're the little cousins, but just look at them. Aren't they adorable? And these little flowers have a slight fragrance to them. Now, when I plant them, I plant a lot of them. The bulbs are small. So for instance, in a container like this, I planted 100 bulbs. And after they've finished blooming, and I've enjoyed them out here on the porch, I'll take them out into the garden and plant them while the foliage is still green. And guess what? They'll come back next year and bloom again outdoors. You can see I've got these double sort of tobacco colored pots with them in it. And look at this low terracotta pot. Here I use 25 bulbs. In each of these, I planted 35. Small bulbs, big impact when you plant them in mass like this. Now, if you get into growing some muscari or grape hyacinths, they also come in different colors. Some are darker purple, there's one that's a pale, pale blue, which is very nice, and even a white one. aroma. It smells like spring in the garden. Coming up next. Do you love fragrance? I do. And in the spring, there's probably no other spring flower that is more fragrant than the hyacinth. Just look at this gorgeous one. This is a hybrid called Atlantic. And, well, I just wish you could smell the aroma. It's so sweet. And over here, look at this one, just emerging as pink pearl. Look at those gorgeous flowers. To maximize my enjoyment of these flowers, one of the things I like to do is to place these around. I can do that because I use these light, attractive containers and I can decorate the garden with them, like setting them up on this big table so I can get closer to them and smell them. And it's really stylish looking to take a big table like this and do all kinds of different kinds of containers with different kinds of flowering bulbs. I'm gonna add some more hyacinths to this collection after I water these in. One last tip, you wanna make sure that your spring flowering bulbs stay moist. And you don't have to worry about overwatering these hyacinths because if you've ever grown them in standing water, you know they'll bloom in those conditions as well.
I don't know about you, but I am crazy about plants and I love to make trips to the garden center, but I have to say that I can go crazy, look, sort of lose my mind because there are so many choices to choose from. So what I'm about today is to create a container that sort of marks an entryway into sort of the, the lower level of the house. thing to do is just get out there and find some plants you really like and come up with some great looking combinations. Have you ever heard of kokidama? It's a wonderful Japanese technique for taking moss and binding the roots of succulents with string or twine. And you can get an effect like this and have an entire hanging garden. Let me show you how. Want to learn more? Visit pallensmith.com for delicious recipes, garden tips, blog posts, and our online store. The way I see it, why limit containers to the outdoors? They can be beautiful inside. You apply those same design principles of texture and color inside. They can make beautiful focal points. And of course, you can change them out. I hope you've enjoyed today's show as much as I have. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith. Now grow, grow, grow.